Stay savage, stay savage, your boy. See, you know, man, Troll was popping. So today, we've been talking about some Naruto shit, right? Right, right, right. You know, we dropped the that video of sorts yesterday. So if you guys haven't watched that, go ahead and check that out. Some blue exorcist. Some pretty much some pretty much some pretty much some pretty much some. Pretty much some, pretty much some I think I was like a broken TV just now. But today we're going to talk about Naruto's wedding. So if you guys have been watching Naruto Shippuden, a lot of people think the anime is not still going for whatever fucking reason. I've talked to a several amount of people, and for some reason, every time I tell them about a new episode that comes out, they always think to themselves, and they be like, yo, Shido, is the anime really still going on? And then, like, I have a friend named Exotic. Right now, he's just starting to watch the Sasuke story that they got animated. You know, the, like, the Sasuke story is coming out on March 7th, so if you guys want to pick up the light novel, you can read Sasuke's story, like, the background in more in detail than the little few episodes that we had that's coming out soon but yeah he just started watching that so right now we're gonna talk about the the build-up to Naruto's wedding and some things that I've noticed and I just want to talk about because they're pretty funny and one of them has to deal with Orochi Maru so with that being said if you guys are excited about today's episode make sure you hit that like button if you're new to the channel subscribe for daily content and let's get it Whipping all this double bit of trap we will call you bitches at the trap out. I can't trust you, I can't give you real address I can't trust you, I can't give you real address It don't mean that be like Jerry Stagger I might fall in love with my trap house so basically, now we at this point where we actually getting ready to see Naruto get married. Like the build up, the build up is pretty dope. I think the build up is probably one of the most interesting things in the whole entire series because we actually watching everybody start to put aside like the battle sense, the the immaturity, the stuff of them wanting to fight and them wanting to like do all type of crazy shit. And we're starting to see them actually try to you know be adults and try to like show off their gift giving and shit like that because Kakashi had the kid. If you guys are not caught up, he ordered everybody to go ahead and put together the best gifts you can if you can't put a best gift together you know you won't be able to come to a wedding depends on value and shit like that so basically everybody's trying to have the best gift now we have a lot of people who are competing with each other some people try to squabble with each other to get gifts such as sakura you know this is common knowledge you know these two always bicker they always fight but they seem to have the same interest in or in like gift giving you know so them two basically got into a beef then we have shikamaru and tamari go and look for a gift but tamari isn't aware of the gift she thinks shikamaru is actually like planning a honeymoon with her and he asked her to marry him and shit like that so it's it's i mean ask her to marry him it's, it's so weird it's like one of the craziest things then we have rock lee and we have ten ten you know we got choji giving out the best gift actually choji is probably one of the slicker people with it you know he did it with a coupon but the thing is it might actually work you know choji may be on to something so i think that's pretty dope we watch it choji do that now one thing that i think is interesting that we watched naruto grow up you know i watched naruto since i was a kid you know naruto was announced like 2000 like early 2000 right so everybody it was basically getting ready for this show everybody's watching it i watched naruto grow up as a little bitty ass kid to like this adult that he is now and looking at him it's pretty dope to say that i get to see him getting married now it's coming up pretty soon we have a few more filler episodes coming up uh a lot of filler yes it's, a, it's really a lot of filler but the thing is it's pretty interesting because you're watching everybody on this nonchalant kick it's not like they're on some war battle already it's kind of you just get to look into their lives as ninjas get to see what they do in their everyday duties not on no comfort missions or not on taking out other fucking ninjas and shit like that no like seriousness you know what i'm saying it's kind of like some laid back let's kick back in the cadillac type shit so we can kind of just look back at it and kind of enjoy it you know one of them things where it's like you know bleach they take a break from the soul society and they go back to the human world and everybody's just like hanging out eating watermelon or they on like summer vacation or some shit like that so it's like you know you get to see like some chill shit from naruto because if you think about it like there are some moments in naruto and some chill shit but a lot of the times it's like mad action or usually it's a lot of sorrow because if you guys remember after the pain arc you know there was a a lot of rebuilding the village and shit like that you know they had a lot of fillers in between that but the thing was it was still like a lot of people that was hurt a lot of people still going through like some painful shit you know what i'm saying so it, it's still one of those things where it's like now they're at complete peace there is no like threat there's no person that's harming the village there's no threat you know it's just the kind of them just chilling now another thing that i thought was so weird because if you think about it he not is a heiress right not as the heiress to the hugo clan that's something that's pretty interesting uh i thought it would be weird to see he not a married naruto without naruto having to go through a power struggle because if you guys know most anime usually have an heiress right the heiress is usually part of the main branch of a clan probably a higher up in a family business or something like that maybe even royalty and usually when there's something when there's someone like that is usually a prearranged marriage you usually see that in the anime so that's something in the past that i kind of thought naruto would have to go through i kind of thought i would have to see naruto fight somebody for her and like in the beginning before i found out her and neji were cousins i thought neji was going to be that person that 
that Naruto was gonna have to fight to get Hinata's hand and shit like that. But then we find out that they're actually family, they're kin. And then you learn the backstory because the reason why I thought that because they both were like Hugo clan members, but we didn't really know the background of Neji. But then when his whole background came out, I was like, okay, that's pretty cool. But like the whole time, I thought Naruto was actually gonna get to fight against like another ninja for the hand of marriage for, for Hinata or somebody that you know was in a different clan. You know, it was a prearranged marriage by her parents and basically saying, you know, this way you sign a peace treaty or some shit like that because eventually we realized Naruto was gonna get with Hinata. That was something that was uh, pretty much hinted a long time ago once we saw like Sakura go completely head over heels for Sasuke and shit like that. So I just felt like, you know, by her being an heiress, I felt like Naruto married her way too easily. Like that's something that usually doesn't happen in anime, but I guess there are peaceful times and Naruto has proven himself to be a worthy ninja by becoming like the strongest ninja in the village and basically renowned all over the world for the person who ended the great ninja the great the four great ninja oh, <laughs> shit boy the four great ninja war for the person to be like the person that ended that shit you know i guess that makes him have the like, classification to you know go ahead and fucking marry her so i guess that gives the approval and shit like that so i thought that was pretty dope to see like them two getting ready to build up and get married and stuff like that but i, I, I what i want them to do is you know we see a lot of like background from you know iruka we get a lot of background from tamari shikamaro Eno sakura we get ten and uh, Rock Lee, even the Ghost of Neji, we've seen a lot of these people come into play, you know, I want to know what's there, what's going through their heads right now, uh, you know there's like a counter, so like for every one episode that happens in the real world, it's like three days off in like their world, because it's like 31 days into Naruto and Hinata's wedding, so it's something like, I want to see like in the last, like at least 10 to 15 days, I want to see something be about them, or like how they feel about them two getting married, or like, you know, Naruto have like a bachelor party, or she has a bachelorette party, kind of some shit like that you know some some cool shit you know like to be really a part of the scene like it'll make me feel like i'm more a part of everything that's going on and i would love to see how naruto feels about him actually getting married because at the end of the day this man always fell for sakura he always thought he wanted to be with sakura then now he's ended up with hinata i know his mind changed over a long period of time but just at the kage summit you know sakura was telling him he loved her and shit like that i mean she loved her and shit like uh, she loved him and shit like that and it was like one of those things where it's like yo bitch why you lying to me my man Naruto was like stop lying to yourself and then Naruto eventually got over it but eventually you know I kind of felt like he knew at one point that he wasn't gonna be with Sakura and he was just over it but like that's still kind of weird because you have this chick that you used to be madly head over heels for at your wedding and she's in love with your best friend and like they're a couple now but you're like completely moved off so that's that's really weird but I want to know what like Naruto is thinking like how he feels about him getting married and you know we kind of have an idea of what he not is thinking because if you look at all the like moments where like a lot of female ninjas try to put Hinata and Naruto together they always talk about like different things they have going on with each other and they always talk about like how she feels about Naruto so you know you probably gonna get that same feeling from Hinata it's nothing gonna be too different it's gonna be like I adore Naruto or you know I love him I love how he is you know I admire how he is as a person as a ninja etc now seeing those two continue to develop and seeing those two continue to grow and you know finally get a hand in hand in marriage you know we already know it happens but it's still dope to get to witness it you know one of those things that makes everybody enjoy anime is actually being a part of it you know we read the manga you know we know it happens but now to get to see it animated it gives you like a closer feeling now one thing that i must say has been like super curious like i don't know how everybody else feel about this but if you've been watching through the little filler episodes you've seen a lot of orochimaru like a lot of orochimaru like i'm talking about a lot of orochimaru dude most people don't see orochimaru that much at all but now for some weird reason he's just everywhere I understand it's filler, you know, I understand most people don't even care about it because it is filler, but the thing is, we have been seeing him a shit ton. Like, this man is just completely coming out of the left field, he's just everywhere, like, so basically what happens is, is you know, uh, Shikamaru and Choji are out getting dinner, Choji orders ice cream, you know, the waiter is Orochimaru, and I'm just looking to myself like, nobody notices this is Orochimaru, the guy who attacked the Leaf Village, you know, one of the most deadly of the three ninja Sanin, I understand, you know, he, he, he did what he did, and you know, people pardoned him for that, and you know, he has Yamato follow him around, but he's just clear, broad daylight, sitting there talking to Shikamaru and Choji, and none of them notice none of them notice like ain't nobody even paying attention to him they just like oh yeah it's, it's cool he's just there so i'm just thinking to myself like 
or what the actual fuck. So, and then there's like the moment when, uh, you know, Iruka Sensei, you know, he was basically trying to figure out how he was going to tell Naruto congratulations on his wedding. They went through the whole backstory about Iruka Sensei. You know, he went to even try to study to become the vice principal of the Ninja Academy and stuff like that. So seeing him like go through all those trials and tribulations, trying to become like uh, higher up and basically get up into a higher standard so he can like talk and be on the same level as Naruto because that's how he feels is going to put him on the same level as Naruto. I think that's pretty dope. But one thing I thought was weird, again, my man uh, Konohamaru has the video camera and we got Orochimaru telling Hinata and Naruto congratulations. And I'm just like, Konohamaru, you know who this is? Like, you, you're you sitting here recording Orochimaru, you know, he's telling Hinata and Naruto. I, I, let's stop here for a moment. You know how many times uh, Naruto thought about killing Orochimaru? You know how many times, like, you know, Orochimaru provoked Naruto? He even made him, like, go batshit crazy, releasing the Tail Beast's chakra. You know, Naruto even went into a state of, like, completely losing his mind and even, all, like, burning all his flesh off. You know, so we just gonna act like that didn't happen. Like, I'm confused. Like, why is Orochimaru just roaming around? Like, I understand it's probably for, like, some comedy relief. You know, we getting a little bit of springtime of youth in there because I would say the encounter with Tintin and, um, Tintin and Rock Lee, it was kind of on some springtime of youth shit. But now that we have Orochimaru just roaming, it, it still fucks me up because, all right, so we got Orochimaru coming through on canoe like he in Paris or some shit. He's, you know, he's kicking back. And then we got fucking Yamato following him in a fucking, uh, Donkey Kong barrel. And I'm just like, where is this shit? But all in all, I must say I've really been enjoying like the, the like the, the the wedding and stuff like that. Getting to see everybody prepare for it, it's pretty dope to see. You know, even Kakashi, he's willing to make sacrifices. He even said he would become the most hated Hokage if that means he has to do what he has to do just to get get everybody happy for Naruto and stuff like that. So there's like a whole bunch of shit going on. Let me know how you feel about the wedding. Me personally, I'm ready. I'm excited. I think it's gonna be dope. I think it'll be cool because we finally get to see it happen. And you know, we know about it. We read about it. We've seen it in the manga and shit like that. But now we actually get to watch it so you know it's, it's different between flipping pages and just sitting back and just like yeah you know what i'm saying so if you guys enjoyed today's video make sure you leave a like if you guys have any video suggestions or like discussion topics that you guys let me cover make sure you leave it in the comment section below and with that being said my name is chino ben stay trying to stay real i hope you guys have a blessed day and until next time see you guys later Boise.